your time to rise and be healed today. Oh, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you, if you don't know it already, let me tell you. God love you. He sent Jesus to save you. He sent Jesus to do everything for you that you needed none that we could not do on our own. He did it for us. And here we are today. We are saved. We are made whole. We are healed. Listen to me. We are healed. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? We are healed right now. Praise God. Praise God. So welcome today. Grab your Bibles. Grab your pen and papers or whatever device you use to take your notes on. Today is your day to receive a miracle from God. God bless you. Now, stay focused as you possibly can. You're going to hear some things that you need to hear today. Praise God. So, in the name of Jesus, we are believing, Helen and I, we are believing God with you. Faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the Bible said they came to hear and to be healed. Listen. They came. Did you come to here today and to be healed? That's what you receive. That's what you come for. That's what you receive if you believe it and apply this thing to your life right now. So make a decision right now. I'm going to use this. No more just hearing this. I'm going to do it. Amen. All right. Amen. Prophet, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Praise God. All right. We can begin. What we are in Christ, part two. Introduction says, Satan has no power <clears throat> when we are in Christ. <clears throat> the expression in Christ is one of the key phrases in the epistles. However, many of us find that who we are or who we were before we found Christ so dominates our minds that we forget we are now in him. Hmm. We belittle our redemption and magnify our failures. Our weaknesses is ever with us. We have the cross religion rather than the resurrected life of the Son of God. Today we will explain what we are in Christ and what this means from God's point of view. Hmm. Praise God. This is powerful stuff, Prophet. Today this is part two of what we are in Christ. We did part one last week. Now, it gets more intensifying. You're going to hear some powerful things. Pay attention to words, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, prophet? God is our ally, no matter what our circumstances. We are in him now seated in the highest place in the universe. And all is required is simple faith on our part to bring the power of God to bear upon our needs, whether our point, whether for spirit, whether for soul, body, or finances, or deliverances. No matter where you are in your faith journey, you will find the reassurance and joy when you realize what you are in Christ Jesus. And we Praise trust God. today that you wore your dancing shoes. You'll be praising God today. Listen, you are healed. You're going to see it. All right, prophet. Praise God. So let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians, 
And we're going to look at verse 17, and it's coming from the NIV. <clears throat> Notice. King James. There, I'm sorry, and the King James. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yes. Praise God. You have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. You have perfect fellowship with him now. The wealth that belongs to you in this new relationship, dare to act your part now. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, for we are in, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. If you are his workmanship, you are satisfactory to him. <laughs> he is pleased with you. Yes. <clears throat> we have preached condemnation and sin so long that we do not know how to preach righteousness and to tell people what they are in Christ. When someone does tell them, they feel that it is false teaching. Mm -hmm. They feel that anything is false teaching that does not honor sin and lift it into the place of Christ. Now, let's pause right there for a second. In every denomination, in every religion, they do this. They live sin instead of Christ. You're just an old worm in the dirt. You know, I'm so unworthy. What is that doing? Prophet, that's calling Jesus a liar, isn't it? Absolutely. Because he made us worthy. By going and dying for us and rose again and now seated at the right hand of the Father, he made you his righteousness, and you're going to see that today. But we keep magnifying sin. Well, you know, there's none righteous, no, not one. That was true under the law. But, oh, students, let me tell you today, you are not under the law if you are born again. Jesus, the Bible said, prophet, he took our sickness, our disease, <clears throat> And he bore it in his own body on that cross. And look at what he said. By his stripes that he took, you and I, watch this here, are not becoming healed. You and I are not going to be healed one of these old days. You and I are healed. Are you getting this right now? Mm -hmm. You are already mm -hmm. healed. But we keep magnifying sin. Sin, we, we, we have been taught to be sin conscious. You know what being sin conscious will do? It'll keep you in sin. But you want to become Christ conscious. All right. Mm -hmm. You are God's new man. <clears throat> Ephesians 2.15 declares that he brought into <clears throat> being the new man having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of con condemnation, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the law of commandments contained in ordinances that he might create in himself of the two, one new man, so making peace. Now, check out what's going on here. We read the scripture to begin with, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man or any person, male or female, doesn't matter, be in Christ. 
You got born again. You got saved. Look at what he said. You are what? A new creature. Just a second. You're not an old sinner saved by grace. You're saved by grace, all right, but you are a new creature. Old things are what? Passed away. Pay attention to words. And this is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And all things, and all things, and all things are become what? New. Now, I want to make a statement here. The Bible says in Adam all died, but in Christ all were made alive. So if you don't get born again, you don't receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, you are still in Adam. Listen now, now here's my statement. The curse is still on you. You are still under the curse. Why? Because you never moved under Jesus Christ. In his lordship, you didn't move under it. When Jesus died to save you and you received him, look what he says. You became brand new. Old things are what? Passed away. Now, prophet, this is what I hear him saying. Even your sickness has passed away because the Bible said Jesus took it. Well, if he took it, how can you or I have it? He took it in his own body. He, Folks, listen to this. He took it. So why are we still claiming what he done took? All right, prophet. I mean, man, Amen. can you see that? I mean, to me, this is clear. Praise God. All right. Ephesians 4.24 says, and put on the new man that after God had been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. The new creation knows but one Lord. Jesus is the Lord of the new creation. Did you catch that? The creation knows only one Lord, and that's Jesus. He said, I'm the Lord that healed you. He didn't say, I'm the Lord who makes you sick. I'm putting something on you to teach you something. That's not what he does. That is not what he says. Folks, if Jesus wanted to put sickness on you, he would have to first steal it first because he don't have any. John 10 and 10 says, the thief come, that's the devil, to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. He is the one who come to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I came so you can have what? Life. Life. Please hear this today. He came so you can have life and have it in abundance. All right. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says, as therefore ye receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in your faith, even as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Wow. Go ahead. What a what a glorious truth. No longer are you we are you weakling. No longer are you a weakling. His strength is your strength. We are so strong that we are to abound in thanksgiving. Look at that. When we stop abounding in thanksgiving, we deteriorate, we, we deteriorate spiritually. Yes. Psalms 27 and 1 says, The Lord is my light. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Mm -hmm. Psalms 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
You how swing. Many times, how many times have we heard people say, you know, we all pray my strength in the Lord? You ever heard that yeah. saying before? Yes. That is a misnomer. The Lord, you just read, the Lord is the strength of my life. Pay attention to words here. The Lord is the strength of my life. One scripture says, be strong in the Lord. He's telling you to do that. Look, you just go ahead and be strong in the Lord. And in the power, watch this, not of your might, not of your ability, but of his might, his ability, his power. See, I always say this, I'm going to say it again this morning. God's thing is power. The power comes from him. But the faith must come from you and I. His thing is power. Ours is faith. If you release some faith, his power is released to you. But not many people have grasped that truth. All right? Praise God. You swing free from the old prison house of bondage and fear and want of hunger and cold. Mm. You are out in the freedom of God. Hebrews 7 and 25 is Jesus' attitude toward you. It says, wherefore, also, he is able to save to the uttermost them that draw near unto God through him. See, he ever lives to make intercessions for them. That's right. He ever lives to make intercessions for you. He is seated at the Father's right hand. So say it over and over. He ever lives for me. That's a good faith confession. He ever lives for who? For me. Some of y'all used to sing it in your church. Because he lives, I can do what, prophet? Face tomorrow. Because he lives, all I can face tomorrow and all fear is gone. is gone. Life is worth living because what? He lives. Mm hmm he gave you a life worth living. And in that life that he gave you, he gave you his life. It's called Zoe. Write this down. Z-O-E. What does that mean? The God kind of life. Folks, God the Father, God the Son was, is not sick. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. Neither are you. I want to repeat that. Neither are you. See, what you keep meditating on, you bring about. What you, what you think about, you bring about. Oh, I'm just an old sinner. Oh, I'm just so helpless. Oh, I'm so unworthy. Religion taught you that, not the word. Read your Bible, you'll see it. That is totally wrong. And that kind of talk, that kind of thinking, that kind of believing, it makes you sick and it keeps you sick. It keeps you bound. But when Jesus came, when God sent Jesus, Jesus swung open the prison doors. Yes, he did. We were in prison, bondage and bondage to sin, sickness and disease and, and uh, not enough money and all this kind of stuff. But Jesus swung open wide the prison doors. I want to ask you a question this morning. What are you still doing inside when the doors are wide open? Come on, prophet. Just as the wife lives for the man whom she loves, so is in a greater measure 
the Lord Jesus lives for you. He does what? He lives for you. Isn't that powerful? He has only one business, and that is living for you. Wow. He, you are his righteousness. Of all the wealth that is known to the human heart, there is nothing that equals this, that Jesus declares through the Apostle Paul that we are his righteousness. Look at that. I cannot grasp it. We are his righteousness. How precious we must be to him. Mm -hmm. He once became our righteousness. He once declared us righteous by his resurrection from the dead. Now he goes beyond the declaration and makes that a reality. And he has, hasn't he? Yes. Praise God. <clears throat> All right. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, him who knew no sin, he made to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We have become the righteousness of God in him. First Corinthians 1 and 30 says, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus who was made unto us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Now, 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 prophet, notice what that says. We have been made what? Righteousness, wisdom. sanctification, and redemption. We have been made righteous. That's right. Mm -hmm. We have been made righteous. 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 When the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one, it was correct. It wasn't a mistake. Under the law, before Jesus came, it was impossible for anybody to be righteous because Jesus hadn't come yet and died and rose again. But now that Jesus has come and died and rose again, guess what? You received him as Savior and Lord. You are righteous. Do you see that? Amen. You are righteous. Folks, listen to this. There is no sickness and disease in righteousness. <clears throat> Our Father in the Gospel have a book. The name of the, one of the books is named uh, right and wrong thinking. He said, when you think wrong, you're going to believe wrong. When you believe wrong, you're going to think wrong. When you think wrong, you're going to talk wrong. How, how true that is. That is so true. And this is what many people in the church is still doing today. But when you pick up the Bible, this is why we keep saying, pay Attention to words. Pay attention to words. Yeah. Pay attention to it. It's not that religion stuff that they that they taught you, and some are still under that bondage. Jesus said, I have healed you. I'm the Lord your healer. Well, you know, Brother Elder, sometimes God makes us sick to teach us something. Come on, gag me with a whole place setting. That's not true. You know what that is? That's religious talking points. Listen to me. That is nothing but religion talking points. It's not the Bible. That's not God. All right. Mm. Note these three blessed facts. Number one, 
he becomes our righteousness, Romans 3.26. Number two, he is made righteous for us, Corinthians 1 and 30. And number three, we have become the righteousness of God in him, 2 Corinthians 5.21. I hope you're writing these scriptures down because we are not making this stuff up. It's right there in your Bible. Amen. Galatians 2 and 20 says that life which I now live in the flesh, I live in faith, the faith which is in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Yes. He loved me. He gave himself up for me. What love is revealed here? He not only redeemed me and sanctified me, but now before heaven, he says, I am that man's redemption. I am that man's sanctification. Hmm. Hmm. He is the great I am. I'm your redemption. I am your sanctification. I set you apart for me. You are the apple of God's eye, people. What does that mean? You are his most protected part. It's you. Sickness and disease, too many times is an inside job. You know how Somebody said, well, the bank got robbed and uh, so far the investigation is, has found that it was an inside job. Listen, Christ died for us. He rose again to make sure we get what he died to give us. So why should you spend one more day without what Jesus died to give you? It's yours. You are, look, you already have it. But it's an inside job. Somebody keep letting sickness back in. Would you like to know how it gets back in? Of course, it comes from the devil. When Satan, excuse me, when Mr. and Mrs. Adams sinned in the garden, before they sinned, there was no such thing as sickness and disease. There was no such thing as the curse. Am I right, prophet? Amen. There was no such thing. All these things came in with sin. But before that, there was none. Jesus is your redemption. He is your healer. He is your provider. Jehovah Jireh means my provider. He have already did everything you and I will ever need, you or I will ever want, you and I will ever desire. He have already did it. For the most part, what you uh, believe in God for, frankly, you already have it. All right. Then I can hear his voice rise to notes of utter triumph when he shouts, I am their righteousness. Yes. This is all his work. It is not of man's work, lest he should say, I had a share in that. Mm -hmm. Your repenting, crying, and weeping had nothing to do with your righteousness or your redemption. Say that again. Your repenting, your crying, and weeping had nothing to do with your righteousness or your redemption. You stand complete in him, in all the fullness of his great match, his great matchless life. Yes. Romans 8, 33 and 34 says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect. 
You are God's elect. Did you hear that? Jesus. You are his elect. All right. Jesus and the Father have elected you. Mm -hmm. And now he says, who shall lay anything to the charge of my own son or my daughters? There is only one person of any standing before the Supreme Court who could lay anything to your charge. And that is Jesus. And he will not do it. Wow. Wow, wow. Who, amen. Go ahead. Who is, who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who also makes intercessions for us. Yes. Absolutely. You, you know, Prophet, there are many people, and it might be some of you in this class today, but there are many people who believe, oh, I didn't messed up. Oh, I must have sinned. That's why I'm sick. Hey, listen to Brother Elva today. That's not true. That is not true true. First John 1 John 1.9 is talking to believers. If any man sin, talking about a uh, man that is in Christ Jesus, woman that is in Christ Jesus, you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Did I get that right, prophet? First John one nine. Look at what he said, folks. He is faithful in just to forgive you and to cleanse you. To do what? Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He's faithful in just to do that. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. Can't you see the wealth of your position? Can't you see the riches of the glory of your inheritance in Christ? Hmm. Are you are you in him? All that he planned in Jesus is a heart reality now. Yes, it is. Yes. All right. Amen. Praise God. This on, is powerful. Prophet, what do you see? I see that you have been uh, really, uh, <clears throat> your heart is in this message, and I think you delivered it very well. Too many people are dying needlessly. The Bible says the last enemy that God will destroy is death. Death is not a friend of God, it's an enemy. <clears throat> God intended for you to live out your whole entire lifespan. He told you to believe him for 120 years. Isn't that right? Amen. What is that? Uh, Genesis Genesis uh, chapters <clears throat> 6, verse 3. Yes. Genesis 3 and 6. I'm telling you, he wants you to live. Why? That was always his desire. That's why the Bible says, again, in Adam, all died. But in Christ, all were made alive. So God had to get humanity out of Adam 
and get them into the new Adam, which is Christ. The Bible says Jesus is the second in the last Adam. It's Jesus. He's that new man. And he came here to show us how to walk this thing out, how to live it out. Glory to Jesus. Do you see that? Amen. And that scripture reference is Genesis 6 and 3, Apostle. Genesis, thank you. Genesis 6 and 3. Mm, yeah. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. A hundred and twenty years. Can't you see people are dying too early? What's happening here? What did the scripture say? My people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. It didn't say they're perishing because there's not enough money. It didn't say they're perishing because the word of God is not in, in effect. No. Satan is moving on people and taking them out because of what they don't know. But Jesus said, come unto me, all you, all ye who are later and heavy later, and I will do what? Give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, here it is, and learn, and learn, and learn of who? Of me. For my yoke is easy. He didn't say it was hard. He said it's easy. Well, y'all know, y'all just pray for me because, you know, the struggle is so real. The struggle is hard. Are you in Christ? Are you listening to me? Are you really in Christ? It, it's like a it's like a person shooting at somebody. And boy, they're running and ducking behind this and ducking behind that. Anything big enough to hide them? So those bullets won't hit them. Here's what I'm trying to show you. How come is all of Satan blows hitting us? It should not be. That's why the Bible said, put on the whole, what, prophet, armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day. Isn't that right? Amen. Put on the armor of God. But not many people. Not, let me put it this way, not enough people. <clears throat> are doing that. What do you say, Prophet? Amen. Well, you know, my thing is they're not doing it. There, there are many reasons why. The main one, I think, is because of a lack of knowledge, uh, a lack of understanding. And then uh, right behind that, we find that the word really have, have not been taught in many places. We yes. do a lot of pre a lot of preaching, and thank God for the preaching. Yes, but we oftentimes need to spend time in teaching and slow That's it right. down, where people can really get an understanding. And I think that's some of the problems we find in the body of Christ uh, today is it's a lack of knowledge. That's true. The people of God is supposed to be the most richest people on the face of the earth. I'll say it again. The people of God is supposed to be the most richest people on the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. It's you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 21, he tells you, you own everything. He have given all things to you. All things are yours. They belong to you. Everything, you own it. What? You keep listening to Larry and Helen. We're going to show you. We're going to show you from the word of God. Amen. Amen.